guys welcome back to my channel today I am going to be showing you guys how I do my budget I put a little survey out on my Instagram stories a couple weeks back and I asked you guys if you'd be interested in seeing how I budget and a bunch of people said that they would be interested in seeing me do a budget video so this is going to be my first maybe of many budget videos in this video, I'm going to show you guys this new budget planner that I got and the budget inserts that I found. Um, I got the planner from Target. It was on sale for $12.48. I mentioned this planner in my Target haul video that I will link up here. And then I also found the little budget inserts that I will show you here in just a minute. I found those at Michael's. The budget inserts, I believe, are around $10. I'll try to see if I can find the correct price and put it on the video right here. So for this video, I'm going to try to be as real with y'all as possible. Um, I am going to do a little rounding just to make it look a little nicer on paper, but this is pretty close to our exact budget. So I will show you guys how we do our budget. And I know it's going to be different for everybody, but this is just how we do it. So let's get started. I just, I just have to brag on this planner again. This is just so cute. I love just the whole design and I, I've been looking for a happy planner and I was so excited that I found one on sale. And the thing that's kind of cool about the happy planner is that these little covers can come off. Everything just snaps in. All the papers um, just come out really easily and then just snap right back in. And I think that's really cool about this planner. I think the Erin Condren does the same thing, but I don't have money for an Erin Condren planner so for now this works <laughs> but you can take the covers and switch them around so if you don't want this cover you can flip it to the back and then this could be your front cover um, so I like that it gives you a, an option to do that so opening this up I haven't done anything in this planner yet I got it a few weeks ago and I've been waiting so that I could film my budget video so I can show you guys what I'm gonna do before I actually start and again this is gonna be more of my budget planner meal planner planner because I already have one for school that I showed in one of my other previous videos a while back um, and that's the one that I use for school and like planning out my day but this is gonna be more of a budget planner and meal planner okay so getting into my budget inserts this is the extra um, packet that I bought from Michaels. It consists of six blank months um, so that you can write on it however you need. It also comes with stickers in the back that you can use to decorate up your pages, which I think are adorable. It shows you all the months on here, January to December, and these ones go on the tabs so that you can um, put one on the front and then one on the back. And then these are what you put at the top of your page whenever you're ready to start budgeting. I picked up a few little sticker notebooks also. This one says recollection. So I didn't get the actual Happy Planner stickers because they were pretty expensive. But I did want to be able to put some stickers into my planner. So this is just a little flip through of these. These are both on sale too. So I think I got both of these little booklets for less than ten dollars and then this is the other one which is also a recollections brand also with the little budget inserts it comes with this little pocket folder that's um, double-sided which I just I, I'm not sure exactly what I'll use that for yet but I think it's neat to have it in there and it also has like a little blank area right here where you can write or put a sticker for labeling so maybe you want to put some receipts or some bills or something like that in here to help you keep track of it and not to lose it the only thing that I did do on this planner was I put a little sticker right here that says budget just so I can keep it separate and know exactly where my budget starts so when you open this up it says up here savings goals for savings goal for each month and then it has the months out here I've seen people kind of put stickers over this and not have it as a monthly goal, but rather just once they reach these milestones, then they can kind of color it in or however they want to do that. So that's not, we're not working on our savings right now. If you follow Dave Ramsey at all, um, he takes you through the seven baby steps. Baby step number one is to save $1,000 in an emergency fund, which we have done. And baby step number two is working on the debt snowball, which is basically taking all of your debt 
And once you have the smallest one paid off, then you can take what you're paying on the smallest one and roll it into the next debt. Now for us, we don't have too much debt going on right now, um, right now in particular, because we, our main debt is some credit card debt, and then we also have our student loans that we will be paying off. We haven't started paying on those yet because we really just don't have the income right now. So while we're in school, we're going to try to start working on paying some of the interest that accrues on the loans, but for now, we're focused on getting rid of our credit card debt. So flipping the page, this says month at a glance. This kind of breaks everything down for you and you can see this is like housing and then it goes down to transportation, insurance, food, children. It even has a place for taxes on here, which is kind of cool. And then up here it says personal care, entertainment, loans, savings, and miscellaneous. And then it has um, boxes for each actual income, total expenses, and results. And then up here is where you put your income. And then it has just blank pages, and like I told you before, this is where you would put the month up here at the top. And then you can just fill in the dates, or you can use stickers, or however you wanna do that. And then this is a bill pay checklist. This is pretty neat, because then you know exactly which bills are, are needing to be paid, and then it has the due date, the amount, and then the amount paid. So I like that this is in here too. Oh, the expense tracker. This is something that I need to really utilize with this planner because just being 100% honest, it is difficult for us to do the full cash system. We've been really used to using our debit cards for everything and so trying to move from debit cards to cash has been pretty difficult for us and one thing that is hard for me is just not keeping up with where my cash is spent. This is something that I really need to utilize and just keep track of everywhere that my money goes. And there are one, two, three, four, five pages of expense trackers. Hopefully I won't be using that many every month. So on to the budgeting. I am going to be showing you guys what our budget looks like. And it, like I said before, it is pretty close to what our actual numbers are. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write down under projected total. Um, and that's where I'm going to do all of my writing for today. I'm not going to do it under actual or difference. I'm just going to put on here the projected total. Our projected main income is going to be $2,500. A month. This is going to be based off of net income, not gross. And so when you do the math, the net income per year comes out to be $30,000 take home. So this is going to be $30,000 take home pay after taxes, net income. So when you do the math, that comes out to $2,500 a month. The first thing that I'm going to be putting on our budget is going to be for mortgage or rent. We actually own our home. So we pay a mortgage instead of rent. Around here, it's really easy to own a home for about the same price as what you would rent. The next thing that's on here is phone. And for us, that is $35, which a lot of people may think is really low for a phone bill. But I just want to encourage you guys to check out mintmobile.com. That is what we switched to. We used to have T-Mobile and it was fine, but our bills, we're around $100 a month, which really isn't that bad, and I would say that's probably average or even less than what a lot of people are paying, but we needed to cut costs because we're trying to pay off debt. And so because of that, we shopped around and we found Mint Mobile, and for both of our phones, we pay $35 a month. So check that out, guys, if you are trying to cut costs somewhere. That's a really good um, way to do it. Our electricity is averaged out at $100 a month. Our gas bill is $35 a month. Our water bill is $60 a month. We do not have cable, so that's something that I am going to actually scratch out on here. And I am going to write internet down here because that is something that I don't see on this list, but I know a lot of people have and we do have. So for internet, we pay around $50 a month. 
And then on here, it also says maintenance. As for right now, I'm gonna leave it blank. And then if we have any extra money at the end of this, then I will come back in and put a little bit towards the sinking fund. It does have a place on here for subtotal. So maybe I'll go ahead and add that up real quick. Okay, so 1140 is what we have for that. So moving on to transportation. So we have one paid off car and one that we are paying on every month, and that is $200. We do not use public transportation. For fuel, we do $180 a month, and that's for both of our cars. I don't drive nearly as much as my husband does, and he has a pretty fuel efficient car, so it doesn't cost us too much in gas each month. But I know for people that don't drive a whole lot, that may seem like a really big number, but we don't use any kind of transportation, like public transportation system, so we have to rely on our cars fully. So another area that we see under fuel is maintenance. And like I said, with this maintenance for housing, I'm going to wait until we are done with all of our set in stone budget that we need to put down on paper before I go back and put money into sinking funds. I'm not sure why they have gas and fuel on here, so I'm just gonna leave that one blank too because that doesn't make any sense to me. But then when you add those together, that is $380. So now we come down to insurance. And for us, since we have a mortgage, we actually have our home insurance um, rolled into our escrow account for our house. So we don't actually pay out of pocket for home insurance. That comes out once a year with our escrow payment. So we can leave this one blank. And then we have health insurance, which again is something that comes out of my husband's check already. And since this is after taxes, then I don't have to worry about that either. Then we have life insurance. And for life insurance, we have $40. And then car insurance, which is going to be about $130 a month. So the subtotals here are going to be $170. This is our food category. Food has been one of those things that's been really difficult for me to budget because some weeks we spend more, some weeks we spend less. But I figured out that our average monthly grocery spending is around $350. So that's what I budget for. And then if I have any extra in the envelope after the end of the month, then it just gets rolled over into the next grocery budget or the next month's grocery budget. The next thing is going to be for dining out. We try really hard not to eat out since we are on a budget, but it does happen. It happens to everybody. And so we do need to budget for it. And for us, we budget about $50 a month. So our subtotal for the food category is going to be $400. One thing that I do not see on this list, which is kind of irritating to me, is I don't see a place for tithing or giving. Um, we actually do tithe to our church, and that is something that comes off the top of our list. So that's usually the first thing that I take out on our budget. Even before I do this, I take out our tithe. So I'm gonna write that down here. And we tithe 10%, so that will be $250. The last thing that I'm going to write on here as a set in stone budget cost that's going to come out every single month is our credit card debt, which is right here under loans. Pretty soon we will be putting in the student loan category, but not quite yet. So for now, it is $38. So now I'm just going to add up all of my subtotals real quick and see where we're at. So we are at 2378. So that means that we have $122 to work with. So some of the extra money could go towards a grocery budget. Some of it could go towards eating out. Some of it can go to anything you have on here. This $122 is just going to be extra. And since we're doing a zero based budget, we want to go ahead and try to plug that in somewhere. So for now, since I talked to you guys about the sinking funds, so we will go ahead and put $20 in our housing maintenance and $20 in our car maintenance. 
So that is going to leave us with $82 we need to fill in. Let's go ahead and put $32 towards debt. So we're gonna say extra. $70 down here. And then we're left with $50 and I'm going to put that down here in just a miscellaneous category. Which would take our subtotal of this one to 300. So let's add everything up one more time and just check our math to see where we're at. We are at our budget. So that's great. So that's exactly how you want to do it. So then down here, you want to write under total expenses, 2,500 and actual incomes, 2,500. Again, this is under projected. It's not under the actual. And then zero is going to be your end result. And that is exactly what you want when you're doing your budget. I just want to show you guys that it is possible to still be able to budget your money and be okay whenever you are on a lower income budget. So thank you guys again for watching this video. I will try to do another one where I decorate this planner a little bit more, but for today, this is where I'm going to end the video. If you like this video or you'd like to see more videos like this, please leave it a thumbs up and some comments down below. And if you have not yet subscribed to my channel, please do so and click the bell so that you don't miss any future videos. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!